Dzień dobry, ja nazywam się Krzysztof Ugacki, a to jest kolejny odcinek programu Liderzy Branży ITSL TV. Dzisiaj to będzie taki wyjątkowy odcinek w języku angielskim, ponieważ naszym gościem jest Martin Melo, czyli głowa Ericssona w Polsce. Mówiąc krótko, człowiek, który zarządza biznesem Ericssona na terenie naszego kraju. My first question is about obviously 5G. 5G seems to be the main buzzword in the industry for at least two years, and it's not still widely used technology, at least not in Europe. Uh, even though the two of the three major companies in that industry are located in Europe, Ericsson is obviously one of them. Uh, when do you think we'll reach the point where 5G is going to be something obvious in every day's life and every day's work? First of all, thank you for the discussion today. Really appreciate being invited. Uh, I think whether it's a buzzword or whether it's a reality depends on where you are in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go back 18 months. Um, April 2019 was when 5G was first launch. It was launched in South Korea in the USA on the same day. Mm -hmm. uh, that was with Ericsson Technology. Uh, after that, it um, moved to Australia, then Ericsson Technology. And the first in Europe was in Switzerland with Swisscom, again with Ericsson Technology. So uh, those countries have made spectrum available early. Uh, they made it uh, permits available for 5G sites and they rolled out 5G fast. That meant that by the time we came to the end of 2020, that there was something like 200 million 5G subscribers and 5G was available to around 15% of the world's population. But that's mostly Asia, right? And even though we have two um, telecommunications companies um, in Europe, I mean, obviously Ericsson and one of your competitors, thank you. And um, it's, not, it's still not very popular in, in Europe, right? So without doubt, the, the US, uh, South Korea, Japan, China, uh, they've been leading the way in terms of 5G deployments. Mm -hmm. um, when you look in, at Europe, uh, only around 50% of the countries have actually had spectrum auctions so that 5G can be deployed. Uh, but there are countries which have really moved fast, and uh, Denmark's a great example. Mm -hmm. and, um, TBC to an Ericsson customer, and uh, last year we swapped 3,800 sites, and the whole country has access to 5G. So in Denmark, if you're a TBC customer, 5G is not a buzzword, but a reality. Mm -hmm. uh, but Denmark is relatively small. Um, for example, when compared to Poland, when, when do you think that 5G will be, uh, will be available in Poland? Um, will it be next year or maybe this year? Because we know that auctions have been delayed and they've been cancelled, in fact, uh, in uh, last year. How do you think it will go on? Yes, uh, the auctions have been cancelled and uh, we're, we're waiting for them to restart again. Uh, all indications I have is that uh, the auctions will, will start uh, after the cyber security legislation has passed through Parliament. Um, I would hope that by the second half of this year, Spectrum is available and Polish customers can start to experience 5G, real 5G. Mm -hmm. But you must remember that despite the fact 5G licenses have not been available, then UK have made 5G Spectrum available for testing and for pilots. Uh, you've already did some pilot uh, tests in, in Europe, in Poland, right? Yes, yes, we did um, uh, test with uh, Orange in Warsaw. It was a live test network. Yeah. Uh, we had around 12 sites, and uh, one of those was uh, right near the Vistula, near the Serena statue. And you could stand by the Serena statue and have 900 megabits per second downloaded onto your mobile phone. So that was Nice to see. We've also put a 5G network in Wuj Polytechnica. Mm -hmm. And we've also just put, uh, again with Orange, a, a 5G indoor test of a live network with um, uh, Wuj Special Economic Zone. So Wuj is a good place to look at in terms of 5G being available. 
But they're test spectrum. Now, when it comes to 5G for Poland, uh, the operators have been launching 5G and they've done this in two ways. Uh, Polkentel has done this on 2600 megahertz TDD. Mm -hmm. It was Ericsson Technology that launched that first commercially in Poland. Uh, that will achieve very nice speeds. And then you've got um, other operators that have been deploying a technology called Spectrum Sharing. Uh, and this technology allows the radios to run both 4G and 5G at the same time, but on the same spectrum that was previously there for mm -hmm. LTE. And this means that the, uh, depending on the s devices in that cell, it will either run 4G or 5G. So if you've all 4G devices in the cell, all the radio resources are, are towards 4G. If you've got all 5G resources in the cell, they'll go towards 5G, and it dynamically shifts every millisecond. So this is another way in which you can get uh, 5G. So the user won't even notice the switch, right? Well, it's not the user for switching because the user has the device. Uh, if your device is 5G enabled and you walk into the cell that supports spectrum sharing, the radio itself will realize that and, and provide 5G access to that device. Mm. Uh, and when you walk, the 4G device walks in, it will give access to the 4G as well. So it, it's dynamic spectrum sharing. And this is something which is uh, very important for 5G as one mm. of the pillars for supporting 5G rollout and giving good coverage. I believe we should uh, clear one thing. Um, 5G is less about just faster internet, uh, but it's much more about new ways of using internet and new ways of uh, communication, such as, for example, um, industrial IoTs or autonomous driving or um, cloud gaming, for example. Do you think that um, there will be uh, any new way of using 5G technology, the connections uh, of the 5G uh, in the nearest future, new ways of using internet, which we didn't invent it before. I'm glad you raised that point, because it's very important for people to understand that 5G is not just another G. I it's mean, not. No. I mean, you look back and 2G was there for voice and 3G yeah. was there for the first data downloads and 4G has been predominantly for video. And then 5G comes along, and 5G is not only aimed at consumers, but aimed at industry. So it's the first G that's got industry in mind. Mm -hmm. um, of course, with the faster download speeds, uplink speeds, uh, lower latency, longer battery life, more security, all of this will be great news for consumers. As but well. it's not that crucial. The crucial is industri industrial. Yeah. Maybe consumers don't need the 10 times the greater speed than they have today, but when you look at applications like AR and VR, Mm -hmm. that will revolutionize retail and, and sports entertainment, you are going to need these high speeds. So consumers will benefit from these high speeds without a doubt. But 5G, as you've mentioned, is also aimed at industry. And these industrial applications are very important. And we see from the pandemic that uh, the, the, the in digitalization of industries has accelerated. Mm -hmm. And 5G is going to enable that digitalization and you can think that 5G will enable the digitalization of industries in the same way that uh, 4G enabled the digitalization of applications which we use every day and take for granted now. Exactly. So there will be many new industrial applications, some of which we, we can show now and demonstrate now, but others that we haven't thought about yet because once this 5G innovation platform gets into the hands of these developers, they're going to be producing some amazing applications that we just haven't thought through yet. Mm, do you think that uh, not implementing 5G in the nearest future will come with a cost? I mean, a cost for uh, the whole country uh, as, as, a, as a econo an economic cost? Uh, there will be a cost for waiting. Uh, as I mentioned, 5G will digitize industries and those countries that are first to deploy 5G will have the advantage that their industries can be digitized first. And mm -hmm. those countries that are late with 5G will have the disadvantage. Um, we already have seen some uh, countries uh, with 5G, as you mentioned, Denmark, for example, or, uh, or Korea or US. Um, can we say that we already see some um, industry acceleration through the 5G in that countries. 
there's a very interesting report that we've worked with uh, analyst Mason. So that shows that there's something like 210 billion euros GDP benefit to Europe. Mm -hmm. And um, it breaks down where the benefits are in different industrial sectors. And the, the biggest sector that will benefit is the smart production cluster, mm -hmm. meaning smart factories, logistics, supply chains. And this is where Poland will excel. So Poland, with its very large manufacturing base, uh, was ranked second in this report, uh, second to Germany, mm -hmm. in terms of the European country that will get the most benefit from having 5G in manufacturing. So we, we do see that whether it's uh, AR inspection, uh, automated mobile robotics, mm -hmm. autonomous vehicles, turning factories from wire, to wire line to wireless to provide flexibility, all of these are uh, areas that production companies are very interested in. And we're starting to see now the first examples of private mobile networks. Mm -hmm. So enterprises want to have dedicated networks. Mm -hmm. This means that they would have their own radios only for that factory. Maybe in some cases the only the core network only for that factory. Do you have the same, uh, that kind of requests uh, also in Poland as Ericsson? We're starting to see this now in Poland. Ericsson doesn't sell directly to mm. the enterprises. We, we sell to our customers and we support them in being successful selling to the enterprises. Um, but we're starting to see uh, the first examples of uh, enterprises wanting to have these networks. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll be a trend that we will see develop Strongly. Ericsson is one of the most important uh, high-tech companies in the world and it specializes in telecommunications, which is kind of a European stronghold in the world of uh, modern technologies. And is this unique position uh, somehow noticed by the European institutions? Uh, to put it in other words, um, do you have any support uh, from the European institutions, uh, like, for example, European Union? We don't look for any help or support from the government. And Ericsson uh, is the world leader in the technology. Uh, just recently, there's been the Gartner Magic Quadrant report that positions Ericsson as the leader in 5G technology, the radio and the core. And it's this technology leadership that we promote. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we want to win business based on our merits. And, and that's based on our technology leadership. So my focus is very much on making sure that we have this technology leadership and we meet our customer commitments. Mm -hmm. I asked this question also because uh, the CEO of Ericsson has recently criticized the European um, model. He was looking at the way in which certain countries like the USA, South Korea, China have rolled out 5G fast, mm -hmm. and they've done this because they've made spectrum available fast. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at Europe, uh, over 50% of the countries don't have the spectrum awarded yet. Only three countries in Europe have spectrum on the new pioneering 5G bands. That's the 700 megahertz, the 3.4 to 3.8, and the 26 gigahertz. Even the, the European uh, you know, homeland of Ericsson, Sweden, has just recently made its auction. Well, Sweden has completed the auction now. And so the, the, our CEO was, was highlighting the fact that it, it's, if you look at the who benefited, which industries benefited the most from forging, it was mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the West Coast American companies oh, with yes. the applications that we all use today that have got the most value out of forging. So he wants being Ericsson being a European country company, he wants Ericsson to to be part of European success and also Europe to have success in developing these 5G applications. But you can't develop the 5G applications without a 5G network there in the first place. So he was highlighting the point that uh, there should be less regulation and more spectrum awarded faster in Europe so that Europe could compete with Asia and the US. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the last question. Um, how the pandemic uh, affected the Ericsson's business in power? So the, the, it's just over a year ago since we 
informed everybody they needed to work from home. So I guess it's almost exactly the year. Um, I remember the date, it was the 13th of March, so yeah, very, it's close, close, very yeah. close to one year when the borders were closed and uh, we asked everybody to work from home. And this was a significant event for the networks because the data on the mobile networks transitioned overnight from being in business areas into residential areas. And the networks coped very well. We saw large increases in voice traffic. Uh, we're all aware of the video conferences now. And you only need to think what would have happened 20 years ago. There could have been no video conferences, no supply chains continuing like they do today. We'll be probably using current phones, mostly. Using phones? Phones, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. In the old fashioned. In the old fashioned way. Yes. <laughs> so, this pandemic has shown the importance of telecommunication networks and it's kept people connected. You know, it's kept families connected, it's kept business people connected, it's kept all health workers, public officials connected in ways which have, have helped uh, massively in, in, in this pandemic. And it's shown that all telecommunication networks, fixed and mobile, are critical national infrastructure. But as I mentioned, the pandemic has also accelerated the digitalization of industries. And we're going to see this trend continue as well, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe so. Uh, thank you for, for today's interview. It was very nice to